Hey guys, Boomer here. Um, wanted to start, uh, do a quick video here on uh, yesterday and today, the trades I saw. Uh, to, uh, yesterday is going to look a little weird because uh, some of my lines are actually on there from today. Um, but ultimately, I just want to kind of show you what I saw. Um, as you can see yesterday, that was the overnight low and the overnight high was up here. Um, then right here, we made a new high. Let me just make this proper. All right, so there we go there. We had a nice little channel working down. So that was the channel kind of uh, working down. And I, I guess I made a bit of a mistake on this one. Um, probably not thinking properly, but I did take this trade and it ended up being a loser. And at the time, I didn't consider it a bad trade, but I, I thought a little bit about this trade and it actually was uh, me making a little bit of a mistake because what we got here is we got a break of that channel after three touches and we're expecting a new low um, from there. And uh, we barely get a little bit over the uh, 200 EMA. And if I actually go one step further, and this isn't always set in stone, but I do use this sometimes. The retracement's going right to 61% there. Um, so that's an indication as well that this, um, and I know you use those Fibonacci retracements for bigger trends, um, but uh, just to kind of give me a gauge. So I probably shouldn't have taken this trade, but I did take this trade right into uh, 200 EMA. And I don't generally care about taking it into the 200 EMA, but um, the context was not right. And uh, even I make those mistakes and we were looking for a new low. Saying that, this was the low of the overnight. So if I just make this line, it's the trade I did not take, but I can see why you would have considered taking it if you did take it. So right there, that second line is kind of crooked, but that's the low of the overnight there. Um, and then right we have here, we have a first entry short, second entry short, except you're going right into it. And you're quite a bit away from the uh, EMA, which is okay uh, because you're within, the, I mean, the bar is within two ticks of the EMA, that's okay. I would not, if this was a little further down here, I would have taken that trade. Uh, but the fact that, that it wasn't, and it kind of looked like the move had already been made um, and that we were gonna bounce right off here. So I'm not really confident going right into an overnight low. Um, and then from there, it actually came back and retested and then moved down. But I did not take this trade. I did not, that was just a trade going right into the overnight low like literally you're right at it and uh, that almost looked like a failed breakout the way it went down and it jumped back up so i'm not i'm just nothing about this trade gives me confidence at all this trade um i completely uh missed the context there of the trade should have been looking for shorts and i took a long um so right now i'm for that time i'm over one but then we did have after we made a new low we did have a pretty nice move up and a pretty good opportunity to get in here for a trade. Um, there you go. There's your trend moving up. There's your first entry. And uh, this is actually going to be a little confusing because this is technically a third entry. But um, it also be, could be considered, well, I guess it couldn't be considered a higher low. Uh, but everything about this trade and the context of it said what it, exactly what it's going to do. So this was not an entry bar that I would have taken a trade on. Um, it just isn't strong enough and it's not above the 200 EMA. So I kind of played this like a higher low or a second entry long um, because this is just wicks here and we didn't get a close above there. So there's a lot of different reasons to take this trade. I mean, if you go to, um, you know, a 3000 tick chart, that's a second entry long. I guess that's another way to think about it. But uh, that that is the trade that um, that I took in that situation there and uh, was able to get 10 ticks out of it. And then it came back and stopped me out to my runner out. So um, ultimately, one loss, one win. As we continue on until today, um, this is where, hold on a second here. A dog barking. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I just had a dog barking I had to take care of. Um, so ultimately, uh, we are looking at today's trades, and uh, we have the overnight low, overnight high. Pretty clear cut there. You had quite a few touches there on that overnight high. And then from there, 
we had a move up, and I did not take this trade, uh, but I did mark it. So we had a high, first entry long, second entry long. Not that this is a bad trade because it's <clears throat> it's not a bad trade, but this is one that was just too far away from the EMA, and, and I kind of made note of this today in our Discord group where I leave random things every once in a while. So if you see that, we're at 20.75, and if I go there, we're five ticks away from the bottom of that wick to the 21 EMA. That's just a little too far. Um, I took a trade here. Um, and as you can see right here, we're at uh, 12.75. Um, and then we're within three ticks there. So that's still a little close. Um, this, this also gave me the illusion of a failed breakout, even though it's quite a bit. Um, I just... I didn't take this trade not because it was a failed break because this is actually a really good trade to take. I would mark this as a B plus. I just didn't like that this was so far away from the 21 EMA. That's the real reason that I did not take that trade. Um, but if you did take it, that was a good trade and there's nothing to matter with taking that trade at all. It ended up being a loss, but that doesn't mean that it's not a good trade. Um, also, um, I made mention in the group that I, I am trading six points on my runner, not seven, because the winning percentage on my runner has been so much lower than usual. I was hoping that moving to six points would help, and uh, definitely has. Um, I had two runners today, so that was positive. Uh, we had a move down here. We had a hidden, right here is called a hidden first entry, which means if I go to a pick chart, you will see a first entry long, and then there is a second entry long. Um, and I did take that, um, and I and I did ignore the is the low of the day because the overnight had so much area, and it, and really at that point I'm expecting it to come down. Uh, that looked like this looks like a failed breakout to me, so I'm expecting it to come down to the overnight low. It doesn't, but it does get me in for a really nice trade here. Um, I was able to get 12 ticks out of the scalp, and then I was able to get six points out of the runner here. So that was a really positive trade. And then immediately price turned around and um, decided to go the opposite direction. And uh, from here, mark that. So you can kind of see what I was looking at at that point. I moved the trend line, but at that point, that's what the trend line looked like. Um, and you had a first entry, second entry long right there. Um, and that is, uh, that is the trade that I took with really, really nice signal bar. Expecting it at least to get to the highs here. Um, and I was able to get eight ticks off this scalp and then 24 again ticks or six points right around, I think it's right around there, somewhere in, somewhere in here, I should say. Um, I was able to get the, uh, the runner as well. So that ended up being a positive trade. So, um, I mean, ultimately, not a bad two days. Now, if you did take those two other trades, you're probably saying something different. Um, like if you took this trade, I could definitely... I could definitely see people taking. Um, so you would have had two runners and one loss today. And then yesterday you would have had, you should not have taken this trade, even though I did. So I'm not going to count this trade um, as something that you should have taken. This was actually my mistake by not understanding the context. But here I can definitely see dropping a limit order in here someplace. So you would have had a loser and a winner here. Uh, so not the best week if you took those those trades. Um, definitely been off the last four and a half weeks. Our eighty percent plus winning percentage, I have as well. Um, but I was happy with um, you know ultimately I was happy with two runners, a scalp, and then one loss. That pretty much puts me you know at you know roughly at 80 percent not quite but roughly at 80 percent but when you get those runners in there that helps a lot as well so um i think you know right now you know the market's been a little bit different it hasn't been as giving as it usually is and that's okay uh but we just need to weather the storm here and uh, continue to trade and as i told you uh you know what i'm sorry i didn't tell you guys as i told my uh my discord group my winning percentage over the last four and a half weeks has been 73 percent which is as low as it's been in a month and you know in a long long time but i'm still making money you can still make money with a winning percentage of only 70 percent you really can um i've had not including today and yesterday i've had 23 trades six losers 
uh, 17 wins of scalps and then five runners to add with those wins. So um, the runners has definitely been down. Uh, usually average 30 to 40% win rate. I'm averaging like 20% win rate on those right now. And my overall winning percentage is like 73, 74%, which is, you know, roughly 10 to 15% lower than it's been most of the summer. And uh, I'm still making good money. Uh, it's not as much money as I'm used to making, but I'm still making good money and I'm still very happy with that. And uh, sometimes, you know, when you're having a good couple months, you have to realize that if you've been journaling this for a long time and you've been tracking it, you have to realize that that average is probably going to be the true average. So if you're averaging 90% and your normal is 80 to 85%, at some point, you're probably going to average 70% or something a little bit lower than 80% in order to bring that average back to normal. And that's what I'm having happen to me right now uh, through the course of the last four and a half weeks. Um, it's help me as a trader, even doing this live uh, with real money and full time for a long time, it still helps me with a trader when we have things like this happen because we are not here to trade based on wins and losses. And that's exactly what I told the Discord group. We are here to only take high probability setups. That is your number one goal when trading. It's not to win and it's not to lose. It's to take high probability setups and take your expectations and emotions out of it. Um, and that's all you can control. You can't control if you win or lose, but you can control what type of trades you take. And uh, if that's the only advice you hear from this video, then that's great advice. Don't worry about the wins and losses. Worry about the high probability setups. So meaning if you're not taking high probability high probability setups, you're not having the normal wins and losses that you would have with this price action strategy. So you need to pay attention to that. You really do. You need to know exactly what you're doing and if you're doing it correctly. And the best way to do that is to look at this in hindsight and then look at all the trades that you should have taken that you didn't take, and take or the trades that you took that you shouldn't have taken and compare those. And once you get to a journaling where your hindsight trades and your live trades are correlated at you know 95% plus, then you know you're ready. But until that happens, you're not ready. Uh, because what's going to happen is you are going to start trading with real money and emotions are going to make you do things that you don't realize that you're doing. Even comparing that to simulated trading, you're, when it's real money, you have to be able to control your emotions. And when you have an expectation of, I want to do this full time for the rest of my life, and this is how I want to make my living, and you have two losers in a row, all of a sudden, the emotions take over. And you're going to start doing things that you've never done before when you were simulating trading. And you're going to start telling yourself that this doesn't work. And you're going to try creating things that you've never done before or YouTubing things that you know nothing about. Um, you know, people saying, this is my strategy and learn this and you're going to change things. And then you're going to be in the same situation you were when you started happens all the time. So what you should do instead is weather the storm, stick with it, keep your expectations realistic. Meaning if you have a long-term expectation of doing this full time, make it, you make that a goal. That's fine. You can make it a goal, but also keep your short term your short-term expectations realistic. Like, yeah, I can do this in five years. That's a long-term goal that you could probably exceed. But yeah, I can do this full-time in five years. But right now, my goal is just to take high-probability setups. I have no different expectation than taking high-probability setups day in and day out. And I'm going to let the chips fall where they may. And if you've noticed, you probably were, if you can do this for a while, you'll probably simulate trade for a long time and realize how well you're doing. And then if you trade over, go over to real money, and you're going to realize you're not doing as well. Now, the market didn't change. Your psychology changed. And that is what you have to master in order to do this properly. All right, guys, that's all. I'm going to leave my uh, information for the Discord group on the description. Uh, feel free to join that. And uh, that's where um, you're going to get more videos and more information and things like that. Um, I guess that's all I got. Boomers out.